As we begin this sermon moment, I'm going to let you in on something. I'm going to try to bridge a generational gap. Um, does anyone actually remember when you wrote these? Now, I see a lot of blank faces on those of the youth and college students. These are called checks, okay? Checks. Now, here's the thing about checks. They're not actual money, but they're as good as money. Remember those things that we used to write? Uh, I used to get one every single birthday from my grandparents in the mail. Now, they would send the beautiful, ornate card, and I knew that you just kind of opened the card a little bit so the check fell out. You looked at the check first, <laughs> then you went back and you read the card. Do you might remember the first time that you were able to write your own check? Anybody? I do. I, I was 16. I had my own bank account, and the banker gave me my own checkbook. Oh, man. What was I going to buy? Lamborghini? <laughs> um, Ferrari? How about a check for $3.79? Written out to 7-Eleven, $3.79 over 100, can't forget that, for Big Gulp, <laughs> Twinkie, and a Slim Jim. Let's go. Step into the spice, brother. You remember Macho Man, come on. And then the fest part, you got to sign your your signature. I mean, this is where you're going to make your mark on the world. So I, I went all in. David Jennings Hughes. You handed that check to him and they said, thank you so much, Mr. Hughes. And you just felt like, man, this was awesome. Now, I, I knew this much about checks. When you wrote your check, you, you quickly went back to your balance book and you balanced your checkbook. You guys know why, of course, right? You never wanted to write a bad check. Um, in the Pickens Sentinel, which was the local town paper in Pickens, South Carolina, where I grew up, there was this section every single week. It was called the jail blotter. <laughs> and every single week, they'd have the pictures of the people that the Pickens Police Department had picked up on various crimes. And always, always, the people who were pictured most, along with their address and their phone number, we're there for what? Bad checks. bad checks. Check fraud. I mean, their checks had bounced. And again, the youth or college students are thinking, what does that mean like checks bouncing? <laughs> no, no, it means in your verbiage, overdraft, right? They wrote an amount for the check and they didn't have that amount in their bank account. You follow? Okay, I see some heads nodding. Yes, we're together. All right. Seems to me that the problem is not that we are able to write checks. Seems to me the problem is that we don't know how much to write the check for. Now, some of you guys are thinking, is he gonna talk about money on Mother's Day? No, no, I'm not going to talk about money. Honestly, um, it would be far too easy to talk about money. We're going to talk about something that is probably the hardest check to write ever. And this is a check for time. Time. Have you ever thought about that? That instead of putting in dollars and cents, oh yeah, got to erase the Slim Jim, the Twinkie, and the Big Gulp here. You're going to put time. Your check is for time. That's the most difficult check to write ever. You only have a limited amount. It's ever decreasing. You don't get it back. Um, when it's time to penalize people, judges do what? They make the person serve time. They take time away. There's no greater penalty than to lose time. 
Time is something that we all talk about, we all think about, but we oftentimes don't think about that time, they say time is money. I'm going to go out on a limb and say time is, is more than money. I think time is the most precious thing that we have that we can give to others. Time. I was recently kind of just in a part of my life where this just blew wide open for me. It started about a year ago. Um, I asked for people at First Baptist Church to give me a yearly job performance. I wanted to know how I was doing as the senior pastor of First Baptist Church. So I, I called uh, my dear friend and then deacon chair, Dr. Mark Albertus, uh, called Kurt Geibig, I called Carmen Dill, all these people that uh, were in leadership positions at that time on respective committees and councils. And I said, I, I want you to review me. I want you to review me. I want to know how I can get better. And, and here's what we, we did. We gathered and they were really encouraging, really encouraging. They said, you know, your preaching's okay. We're, we're getting by. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But then they said, but you didn't come here to hear what you're doing well, did you, pastor? I said, no. I want the truth. I said, here's the truth. You need to give more time. Time to visitation. Now, you can get up there and preach a sermon. But we're not going to hear you as our pastor from the pulpit until you're our pastor on our front porches, in our living rooms, and by our bedsides. Man, that was the best piece of advice that a young pastor could ever get. So you know what I did? I went to my calendar, and every Tuesday afternoon, from 1.30 to 5, every single week it says, Visitation. I'm out of the office, and I'm checking in on you. And here's the reason. People think that love is spelled L-O-V-E. It's not. Love is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. That's how you know your pastor loves you. That's how you know you love something other than yourself, that's how you know you love one another. Time. I've seen some great examples of time here lately. My wife is an amazing music teacher at the Carrollton Upper Elementary School. And uh, Friday, it was my opportunity to go serve her for a chance. She's here every Sunday, Wednesday. She serves here at First Baptist Church. It was my time to get to go help her. And so we led the children down from Carrollton Upper Elementary School down to the Mabry Arts Center, and they did what was called a, a tech rehearsal. The dress rehearsal comes tomorrow. The performance is Tuesday at 6 p.m. They're doing Aladdin. It's going to be amazing. Y'all come. It's going to be so good. And as I, as I watched my wife, I was so blown away. I was so blown away of the respect and the love that she garnered from those kids. I was so blown away. And here's, here's how I know that that's true. She has spent so much time preparing. Time in which I thought would be for her to be able to relax, to, to just tune out. Honey, what are you doing? Working on Aladdin. Honey, what you thinking about? Thinking about Aladdin. Honey, you seem like you were having some dream and you were singing something in your sleep. What was that? Probably dreaming about Aladdin. Time. That's how love is spelled. I got to go that same Friday afternoon, and I got to see one of our amazing athletes do her thing. Aubrey Dishman was competing then to qualify for the state finals in the 7A Georgia track meet. And um, I got to sit with her parents, Allison and Jeff, her brothers and her sisters, her whole family. And we watched this young lady just compete and gut it out. And as she was streaking around this, this track, two laps of a dead sprint, two laps, 800 meters, I could not help but think how much time she has invested in this. How many practices she's invested in this 
time, time. Why? She loves it. And it, and it showed through. And to do one better, yesterday was the state championship. Not only did she set a new school rec record at 2 minutes and 16 seconds, she finished fourth in the state of Georgia. Amazing job. You wrote a check for time, and when it was time to cash it in, it didn't bounce. <laughs> and all of you mothers out there, how many times have you spelled love? By what? You give time. Helen Spruill here, as our oldest member today at 99, What's she given this church for 99 years? What's she given to her son that's right there beside her? What has she given? Time. Time. And anytime someone writes a check for time, nobody thinks that it's check fraud. Nobody thinks that it's a phony check. People say, you know what they say? They say, take it to the bank. <laughs> this one's good. This one's good. In fact, we don't know how good it is. There's something about the time that moms have given us and the love within that it speaks to eternity. And that's exactly the type of time that John is talking about in that scripture that was read to you. You know, there are people within the church known as the Gnostics, and, and they thought time on earth was a complete waste of time. They thought that they just needed to live for eternity, and, and this existence was really all about the afterlife, nothing more. So what did they do? Well, <laughs> they had the time of their life, <laughs> but in all the wrong ways. They lived for ill, they lived for self-gain, they lived for pleasure, and they're telling other Christians, this, this is what you should do with your time on earth. This is what you should do with your time on earth. And John, the apostle, is writing him, and he's like, Absolutely not. They're passing off check fraud to you guys. You don't want to invest like that. You don't want to write checks like that. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you how to write a check with your life. And he talks about this amazing word called the incarnation. Now, the incarnation is a theological word that means God came to us in the flesh. And we know that person to be Jesus Christ. He was fully man, but he was fully God. He was the incarnation of God. And, and if that wasn't incredible enough, here's what John says. And it's, it's a jab at the Gnostics, but it's also for all the Christians out there who are wondering, what do I do while I'm here on earth? What do I do? How do I make time count? He says, I'll tell you this. The incarnation that happened in Jesus was not just a one-time event. The incarnation was the first of many. Why? Because any person that says Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Spirit of God comes and lives in that person. What does that mean? We are the incarnation of God now. And what do we do? But spell love, T-I-M-E. The prelude you heard by Greg Hendricks is one of my most favorite songs. We also sing it. Here's what the second stanza say. Though I may give all I possess, and striving so my love profess, yet not be give with love within, the prophet soon grows strangely dim. You can write a check for as many zeros as you want. And some of you could today. You wouldn't even miss it. And if that's your heart's conviction, I receive it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but there's a check here that's far more important. That you, with your life, write out a check for time. And you want to know what would make it really radical? Make it a blank check. Let the person who receives it dictate the amount. 
And whether it's in weekly, ongoing, reoccurring payments to the church, or it's a big one-time gift, I'll tell you what. The church can live and survive and go forward without money. It cannot live, survive, and thrive without your time. So on this Mother's Day, a day of love, a day of when we think how richly we have received, how many times was love spelled to you, T-I-M-E? And to ask ourselves, was, was that not God? Was that not God speaking through the mothers in my life to say, this is what real love is? You are the incarnation of God himself now. And the way the whole world knows that they can take your check to the bank is when you write it out for time. I think that's a good word for us today. I think it's something we can all write a check for. I want you to know that you can write that check here at First Baptist. There are so many ways that you can write a check out for time and it will go to express L-O-V-E to the world. But don't miss the every single day opportunity you have and those people that are seated right beside you here and now. Spend time with the people that are in your family. Spend time with your mom. Spend time with your dad. Spend time with your kids. And at the end of life, it's coming sometime. When time is up, John says this, you've known perfect love. You've been perfect love. And now, those who have known perfect love do not fear. They see God as a friend and they see eternity, a place with time unending as the ultimate gift. Will you pray with me? God, in our hearts, we recognize those who have written checks for time to us. Thank you for the love they have shown us. And now, for Jesus Christ, the one who wrote the biggest blank check ever. We give celebration and reflection for the love that he gave us. And now we ask, oh God, where do we write our checks for time? Lead us and guide us to that decision so that it will be to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.